What did you think about this uh, last case and the guy's support meanwhile? I think uh, the the one that just started. Uh, yeah. I I think the guy support is uh, is essential when you try to cannulate this uh, difficult. Uh, I go immediately with the wire, and as soon as uh, I load the wire in the guide, and as soon as I mean, uh, I advance the wire, so I stabilize uh, the guide. And uh -huh. sometimes you need to work with two wires, one uh, uh, to give more stabilization of the guide and catheter. That's true, um, double wire. <laughs> so I think it's not so easy to say what's new in cardiology after you saw the kids and after the excellent uh, introductory lecture this morning of uh, Dr. Sharma. But uh, a few items which already been discussed uh, will be dealt very quickly. So on some slides, I will skip in the interest of time. I have no conflict to disclose. I think uh, in stable angina, a patient uh, ischemia trial supported the concept of reasonable incomplete revascularization. If complete revascularization is important, is a my. I think ischemia trial has shown that you don't need to revascularize at all. So at least uh, some uh, minimalistic revascularization may be valuable. Uh, sustained evidence that imaging and physiology make PCI better. I think this is the uh, we tried to promote this concept for the last uh, 20 years, and now we are getting there. Better lesion preparation, particularly for calcific lesion. We saw several examples in this meeting. And I believe bioresorbable scaffold paved the way to the concept of lesion preparation. So uh, they need to be uh, congratulated for opening the field. And uh, new devices, also little trips made uh, uh, this success uh, reality. Uh, introduction of new deaths. I will uh, uh, devote two or three slides about this new uh, DS, metal DS, uh, called bioadapter. You will uh, uh, see later on. Uh, PCI in complex lesion is now safer thanks to mechanical support. I think we saw several examples. Uh, success in CTO continue to rise and safety as well. And uh, uh, we heard the, the debate, the pharmacology has been simplified. The concept of high, pre high bleeding risk, uh, reducing complication of dual antiplatelet therapy. For most of DS, uh, now one month may be sufficient. Uh, there is a trend toward the single agent. And uh, I think we completely abolished the triple therapy. So I think... Uh, uh, this could be the summary slide of all, uh, of all my talk. Uh, we uh, ran the AVIO trial. I was guided PCI many years ago. And uh, despite uh, uh, I was uh, a lot of time, we were not able uh, to achieve a good result because we had no devices to dilate the lesion well. So some technology uh, to treat calcified fibrotic lesion were not present lithotripsy, orbital aterectomy, or cutting balloon was not fully utilized. So I think uh, if we repeat the AVIO trial now, most probably this 40% will go down to 10%. Uh, approach to calcify lesion, I go fast, high pressure balloon, rotablator, angioscal, cutting balloon, shock wave, and laser. Um, the concept I will make in these few slides is that uh, sometimes you need a combination it is very difficult to evaluate one device versus the other. This is an example of a calcific lesion or tablet of 175, high pressure balloon that did not work. Then we use a cutting balloon. When we use cutting balloon, we go at 24, uh, 25 atmosphere. But uh, as I said, uh, we undersize the balloon half a millimeter because this balloon is at high pressure becomes compliant and with cutting balloon, Sometimes you achieve uh, a good lesion expansion here at the IBUS crack uh, caused by the cutting balloon with uh, a good final result. Uh, shock wave, uh, you can do really shock wave even in a strange situation. This is an occluded stent. We uh, finally crossed below the, uh, underneath the, uh, the struts. So noting the lumen and uh, created a new lumen and crushed the old stent. 
uh, but because of the uh, calcification, we used uh, uh, extensive shock wave uh, uh, to fully expand. And uh, finally, we uh, reached uh, a good result with this uh, uh, unusual utilization of the shock wave. But again, uh, the value of multiple devices is important. Uh, despite the shock wave and whatever the angiographical looks good, the Argus result is uh, still uh, unsatisfactory. And we were able to correct these uh, only with OPN, very high pressure balloon at 37 atmosphere. So it's not rare that we use uh, this device uh, after the shock wave. The problem we saw in the LED that uh, uh, was treated by uh, Kimi is this uh, uh, focal calcium. This focal calcium is very difficult uh, uh, to be dealt. A shock wave uh, many times does not work, uh, most of the time does not work. Maybe orbital attractment, but we don't have experience uh, with these devices. So the final result uh, is most of the time asymmetric. Uh, uh, even uh, in this case, uh, uh, Wolverine at high pressure, 24 atmospheres did not succeed. Uh, and after stenting, you see this uh, uh, reasonable result, but not uh, uh, an optimal result. Uh, and you see that there is still uh, uh, some sign of the balloon incomplete expansion. But, uh, you know, I think uh, there is nothing you can do and you have to accept, but maybe uh, some new technology will take care. Uh, three slides about this new stent is available in Europe. Uh, maybe soon will come in US. Uh, is a metallic stent DS, where the link uh, in the coronal plane are uh, detachable. Uh, the polymer, after six months, reabsorb, and the stent uh, is able to expand. So this is the uh, stent. Uh, after six months, you see that there is a lumen gain in systole and in diastole of about uh, 14, 9 percent because uh, the stent becomes uh, uh, loose uh, and there is no more uh, jailing of the vessel wall and allow positive remodeling. This is the schematic view of the stent. Uh, standard stent, uh, you see that they are uh, uh, same uh, and the only difference is the hyperplasia. Uh, with this uh, bioadapter, uh, the link break uh, or open, uh, to say a better word, and uh, you have a positive uh, uh, remodeling of the vessel, uh, which may be able to accommodate hyperplasia. So the final lumen uh, is at the end uh, a little bit larger. This advantage is also translated uh, into regaining of the anatomy because there is no more straightening as a follow-up. Uh, we did a mechanistic study with Dr. Berey in 50 patients uh, published in Neo Intervention. And there are other studies. There are two big randomized studies, uh, one in Sweden and one in Japan, uh, comparing this device uh, to standard metal stents. But what are the open issues for our future? This is a, a P why PCI keeps on failing. Uh, in complex patient versus bypass. A lot of patients we saw today, uh, maybe if we were treated by a very good surgeon, would have done better. Because I think PCI in complex patient is still inferior to bypass. Is the issue related to the patient or to the lesion? I think it's related to the lesion. Should we be considering uh, stenting the only approach? Maybe stenting is not uh, uh, the default approach in every lesion. Any reason to resurrect the bioresorbable scaffold? And uh, the saga on diabetic, diabetic is the protective role of mammary on the proximal LED. These are all issues uh, uh, for, for the future. I recently showed the 60 year old gentleman, uh, I showed the angel, and I recommended bypass. Should this recommendation become the standard in this type of anatomy, or maybe in five years we can think differently? Uh, look at this, is the left main with a bifurcation of the circumflex. It's a nasty with a lot of diffuse disease uh, in the circumflex. Uh, the bifurcation is not a simple one. There is another diffuse disease of the LAD. 
uh, and uh, the right coronary artery, the patient is diabetic. So I think this is a straight bypass. Can we see in the future uh, any change or we have to accept that this type of patient should go for to bypass and period? I don't know. But um, the point I like to make is that when we have a four collisions uh, like uh, the one uh, in this uh, uh, graphic, uh, uh, stenting is ideal. But uh, I'm really question the idea to treat with long stents the diffuse LED. So I like to propose, and I hope uh, next year to provide you some data that stent and drug uh, lutein balloon together may be a better solution for this uh, uh, type of lesions. A large vessel, uh, three millimeter stent or larger, 20, 25, 28, you pick a number. But uh, in long lesion with diffuse disease, uh, we should use the same approach and use long stents like we saw today, or should we propose uh, something else? Uh, you will see some example of optimal lesion preparation, maybe stenting proximally, and then IVUS and FFR evaluation, and then use Dracoti balloon. I don't believe uh, that this type of result apply to contemporary interventional cardiology. Long stents uh, or totally occluded, uh, this patient cannot be treated. You can reopen the stent, uh, but they will restenose uh, for sure. An approach uh, here is an example. This is a, a bifurcation LED with a big diagonal, a lot of disease. This long diagonal, if stented 2.5 with a 38, uh, always, almost always restenose. The only way to prevent restenosis in limbs is long diagonal is to avoid angiographic follow-up. That's a guarantee that you prevent restenosis. Otherwise, restenosis is guaranteed. In this case, uh, we stented the ZLAD and uh, we did ballooning of the diagonal. I see that there is a dissection but the PDPA, all concept of Grunzig, was uh, only 11 of gradient with a pressure wire very distal, and we did dry coated balloon, and patient did well. This is another example. You see an uh, LED with a severe lesion proximally, a lot of diffuse disease distal. Uh, we did the stenting proximally, but distal was a suboptimal result. Uh, we measured the pressure is still uh, significant. We did further dilatation uh, with the 2.5 balloon, and then PDPA was 94, contrast FFR 88, and we elected to use a drug-coated balloon, uh, 40 millimeter, with a very reasonable result. So I think... Uh, this is not to go against stenting, but to give an aid to stenting in situations where stenting may be suboptimal. Uh, there is even an emerging role of DCB on the side branch, and in some setting, only in some, uh, even in the main branch. This is a case we did recently, complex bifurcation. We did uh, pre-dilatation, the usual stuff, and then uh, uh, we did kissing balloon, and then uh, after uh, these, uh, we did uh, uh, DCB, and we didn't place a stent. Uh, the reason why we took this decision is because when we measured the gradient in the LED, there was zero gradient, was uh, one PDPA, and on the diagonal was 95. So it's rare, but uh, sometimes uh, uh, an excellent result, uh, even if there is a dissection, can be accepted. Uh, 91 uh, uh, very distal in the diagonal and one uh, so means zero gradient in the LED. So it's uh, maybe this is too much, uh, but uh, sometimes uh, you, you don't need an a stent. So I conclude uh, by stating the PCI needs to evolve. A stent, one type of stent, a metal, bioabsorbable, bioadapter, etc. A drug coated balloon, uh, one single device may not fit all. So we need to be a little bit innovative and combine different devices in the, in the same patient. And in some situation, we have to resurrect uh, hybrid uh, with bypass surgery. We saw several cases uh, today where a good memory on the LED would have been perfect, maybe even a memory and a drug coated balloon to improve distal flow. I know that these are not so practical solutions, 
but uh, if I were a patient, I don't care if the solution proposed is practical or not. Thank you for your attention.